Hi guys, so this week's Lifestyle Love comes all the way from Queenstown, New Zealand. This is my first time to New Zealand. I've taken a week off to go skiing and I am absolutely blown away by how incredibly beautiful this place is, how warm and friendly the people are and how delicious the food is. I've not had a bad meal the whole time being here. It is just incredible. So. If you get a chance to go to Queenstown, I highly recommend it. And at the end of the video, of this video I should say, um, I'll actually include a pan of the view from my hotel um, balcony because it's absolutely um, breathtaking. Anyway, back to lifestyle love. So this week's video is, an, is a personal one off the back of, I guess, my personal experience. And it's all about how to deal with criticism. In the past, I've always dealt with criticism in a very, I guess, immature and negative way. I've gotten incredibly defensive, um, I've attacked back, or I've just basically run away and sulked. So a pretty disappointing reaction, but I got to a point where I realized something had to, it was, something had to stop. I needed to change um, the way I looked at criticism and the way that I handled it. And I've discovered some, I guess, I've, I've formulated my own um, strategies and, and um, techniques to help when I hear criticism, I handle myself in a much more positive manner so that I get, you know, a lot of personal growth and I use it as an opportunity to, to learn more about myself and also to learn about my, I guess, my strengths and my weaknesses and then use those as an opportunity. And so this video, I wanted to share with you what I do to help me handle criticism in a much more positive way and make me, I guess, a better person. So the first thing is, you just listen. Let them have their moment to express themselves. Do not talk to them, do not cut over them, just breathe deeply and listen to everything that they have to say carefully. Step two is repeat back to them what you've just heard for clarification. Say to them, okay, so you feel that or you think my behavior was like this. Now this demonstrates to the person giving you the criticism that they have been listened, they have been understood and it also allows them the opportunity to clarify any misunderstanding between the two of you. Now this is really important because often when we're being criticized we don't listen properly and we misunderstand, misunderstand certain things that are said. And a classic example, which happened to me about a month ago, was somebody told me what I thought was, you are a spoiled brat. Now when I, I got obviously very, very, uh, I was furious. I was very, I, I attacked back, I became defensive and I, I did all of those things and I sulked. But when I said back to that person, you said that I'm a spoiled brat, they actually clarified and said, no, you were behaving like a spoiled brat, which mean two very different things. And the moment I had that clarification between this person and myself, I immediately calmed down and didn't get so defensive and was able to move forward, you know, on working through that criticism. So it's so important that you repeat back to that person what, what you've heard and also they feel validated in their feelings that you're taking what they're saying very seriously. You're showing respect back to that person. Now I know for myself personally when I get criticism I like to go away and think it through and analyze it and, and understand where I stand and what my thoughts are on that criticism. Now, if you need to do that, make sure you explain to that person that is what you're doing. You are taking on board what they've said and that you need some time to go away and think it and process it. If you just walk away, which is what I have done in the past, without communicating that, that person thinks you're being disrespectful to them and that you don't appreciate what they're trying to say to you and that you're just behaving in an immature, um, disrespectful manner. But if you actually say to them, no, this is serious what you've said to me, I really want to understand this and, and have a think about it, they will then allow you that space to go and do that. They will appreciate that what you're saying is being taken seriously. Next step is analysis. This is where you have a good, long, hard look at yourself and what happened and, and the actual criticism that's come your way. Now, for me, the moment I feel a little bit emotional, something is triggered within me about that criticism, I know that there is an element of truth. And obviously there are lots of different ranges of truth. Maybe they just got a little bit. Um, but I know the moment I get, you know, that those feelings of defensiveness or um, anger or frustration, I know that they've touched on a raw nerve for me and that whether it be true or not in reality, I know that I believe a little bit of what they've said. Now, a classic example of explaining this is, say for example, um, somebody had a go at me and said that I was really fat. 
Now, if I had, you know, had say a bad weekend where I ate lots of junk food and hadn't done any exercise and hadn't sort of shown any sort of self-love to my body, if someone said that to me, I would get defensive. And that does not necessarily mean I am fat. No, it means I have behaved badly over the weekend and I'm, I'm deep down, I know myself that I'm feeling guilty. But that is not the truth of the, of the situation. I'm not fat as a person, but they have definitely touched on something that I need to be aware of and I need to make take the appropriate actions to rectify that. Whereas if someone just said, if I'd been eating healthily and exercising and taking care of my body and I was really proud of the way I, I looked and felt, um, if someone's to say that, I'd have no emotional reaction because I know that that's simply not true and I would, it wouldn't even, you know, it would be water for ducks back, I'd laugh it off and, and probably even say something funny back to that person. It wouldn't, it, it wouldn't need to take any ownership and it wouldn't trigger or ignite any sort of reaction in me if it's not the truth. This, so this technique can help you work out whether there is something going, there is an element of truth that you need to, to use and grow from when someone criticizes you. The moment you've gone through the analysis and you realize that they've touched on something or maybe they haven't, you need to take ownership. And that means obviously having a look at where you've gone wrong, what things can you put in place or things you can do better or differently that would create a much more positive outcome for that person and yourself and obviously for your own personal growth. Even if that means going back to that person that gave you the criticism in the first place and even asking them for suggestions as to how you can improve as a person. And to be perfectly honest, when I um, recently had some really um, harsh cri uh, criticism, I went back to that person and said, can you please help me? I understand I'm you know, bad at handling this. I need some help. And that person was so incredibly respectful and kind and took the time to help me work through the issue that I was dealing with and I haven't actually had that issue come up again since. So I think there's, you know, when you can express love and appreciation back to that person, they will open that um, feedback with welcome, uh, with welcome arms and help you, you know, on your personal growth. And even for themselves, it might help them in some other indirect way. But my word of warning, when it comes to asking for advice or feedback or even maybe going to a third person to get their personal perspective on the criticism or, or what happened, is everybody has a subjective, um, I guess, point of view. Um, and for example, say I, I was to have a fight with a boyfriend and I went to my girlfriend to talk to her about what happened and, and the criticism that he gave me. If that girlfriend doesn't like my boyfriend, she will potentially, could or may, give, I guess, a negative um, perspective or, or feedback about him, which is not conducive to my personal growth as a person. So you've got to be very, very careful as to who you open yourself up for, for that feedback or for that advice. But it's also important to remember, the more you value that person who is giving you that critical feedback, and the more emotionally invested you are in that person, the naturally the more defensive you're going to be in hearing their criticism and their, their negative feedback. But at the end of the day, this is an amazing opportunity for you to not only grow as a person, but also for your relationship and bond with that person to also grow and strengthen. My key message at the end of this is act, don't react. When you hear criticism, stay calm, listen to what they've said, repeat back to them so you can clarify exactly what they're trying to say to you, go away and think about it, take as much time as you need and want to have a think about it, and then put in place the right strategies, um, behaviours, perspectives, so that going forward this only makes you a bigger and better person in this world. So that's it for Lifestyle Love. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I love hearing your feedback and I will see you next week on Lifestyle Love or Money Monday. <laughs> Ciao from Queenstown and don't forget to watch the panoramic view at the end of this video from my hotel. Ciao! <laughs>